Breaking tonight, Jeb Bush ramps it up in what is now a full-blown political war with Donald Trump, a fight that could help decide the Republican nominee for president. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. This rivalry has been simmering for weeks, but in just the last few days, it has erupted as Trump continued to go after Bush for being, quote, low energy, for being part of the establishment, and even for speaking Spanish in response to a question asked in Spanish on the campaign trail. Bush pushed back, first with campaign ads, then with remarks to the press, and tonight in a town hall campaign stop in New Hampshire, he made it clear that it is on. Watch. Donald Trump has proposed in the most recent past the highest tax increase in American history. Donald Trump, aspiring to president, still believes that the Canadian health care system is really good and works in Scotland. This guy is not a conservative. This guy does not believe in the greatness of our country. My belief is that most people are conservative. They just haven't been asked yet. Yeah, maybe a little in Spanish. Donald Trump says that anyone who criticizes him will automatically go down in the polls. Are you concerned about going down in the polls? No, I'm not going to participate in some reality TV show. I'm going to push back when he, when he says things that are ugly. And I'm sure as hell going to, when he attacks me personally or disparages my family. He's damn right I'm going to fight back. I hope you would do too. Charles Krauthammer is a Fox News contributor and author of the book, Things That Matter, which is now out in paperback. Charles, good to see you. Well, that's a good different sounding Jeb Bush. Yeah, it sounds as if he really had his Wheaties this morning. Um, and, you know, he's no longer, that's not low energy. Uh, look, I think the strategy was originally, don't get into the a fight with, with Trump. This is a summer storm, will come and go. Uh, but he's not going, and his numbers are strong. The Monmouth poll has uh, Trump now at 30 percent nationally. So a uh, Bush, who was the front runner, who's way down now to where he was, uh, has to make a choice. And I think his choice is a correct tactical one. You've got to take him on. Now, I think he's doing it on two levels. One is on personality. He's trying to show that he's got fight. Uh, and I think, you know, he's not going to win that fight with Trump. Trump has brought outrageousness to it. It's created... It's made it into an art form, and he's running the most successful reality television show in history. But I think it's important that Bush should show that he's not the guy who's going to lie around when sand is being kicked in his face. So he doesn't win that, but I think he gets off the mat and he shows that he's got character, and I think that's important. Okay, but, uh, but, the, but the reality is, for, yeah. for Jeb Bush or any other Republican candidate doing that, it's like ra waving the red, you know, uh, material flag in front of the bull. And that's what, what set Jeb off tonight was one of, the, one of the people in the town hall said, are you concerned your poll numbers are gonna go down given your counter attacks against Trump because we know what he does? Well, you know, uh, Donald Trump is not a bull who needs red waved in front of him for him to charge. He charges on instinct. He charges when the sun rises. So it isn't as if it's going to make any difference. The hits on, on Bush are going to come one way or the other. They started long before Bush attacked him. So he really has no choice. I don't think he's going to amp up the, the counterattacks. But if he does, at least he's got a fighting chance at, on personality. Now, on, on, on ideology, I think his case is a very strong one. It is true what Trump is not a, what you'd call an orthodox or traditional conservative. I doubt he's a conservative at all. But nonetheless, that's not going to have a big impact on those who support the Trump. Because mm -hmm. that's a matter of style, strength. You know, I'm a leader. I'll do stuff. I won't have to tell you how. But I'll, I'll kick sand in the, the face of the Chinese, the Japanese, and the Mexicans. And that's sort of exciting to hear. But I do think it might put a ceiling on his support. There are people who are deeply conservative who like the Trump style, but we're going to now learn about his past, learn about his life, his political ideology, and that could put a ceiling on it. That's the Bush strategy. Whether it works, we don't know, because uh, Trump is a kind of candidate we have never seen, and he's writing a new set of rules. What does it tell you, what does it tell us about how Donald Trump feels about Jeb Bush, that he continues to put Jeb Bush in the crosshairs. I mean, right now, Ben Carson looks to be the biggest threat to him, but he's very focused on Jeb. Why? Well, you know, what uh, Trump managed to do today is to actually find a way to disparage Carson, which you would imagine is impossible to do. 
Uh, but he did put out a tweet or something in which he said, I really like Carson, but, uh, you know, you don't get it. He's at a disadvantage because a neurosurgeon doesn't really have a chance to create a lot of jobs, maybe a nurse or two. He said it to the Daily Caller. That's rather remarkable. I would have thought that Carson is, in a sense, untouchable in terms of uh, personal disparagement. But, yes, of course, the heavy artillery is against Bush because two reasons. Number one, he was the chief rival. He is the guy with the most money who can hang in there all the way to the end. But also, I think he's sort of the representative in Trump's eyes and in the eyes of his supporters of the establishment, ultimate establishment, mm -hmm. the third in a line of presidents. Uh, and that's the reason why he's the, ju the juiciest and the most inviting target. Now, let's talk about the loyalty pledge that Trump was willing to make today and was not willing to make on August 6th at the Fox News Republican debate. He says it's because in the last month, the Republican Party has treated him fairly. I, I mean, is that the real reason? Do you buy that? And is this paper, you know, worth, the, is this pledge worth the paper it's printed on? Uh, the answer to the second question is no, uh, because Trump could easily say any time between now and, uh, I don't know, six months from now, I've been treated unfairly recently, uh, I haven't been treated well, and thus the pledge is moot. Or any now, of them. I'd, any of them could I, do that. Yeah, but, I mean, Trump is the one who's the most, everybody is the most afraid of. I don't think anybody's worried about a, uh, you know, a Huckabee third party Yeah, but there's a question about whether the, the ultimate nominee, if it's not if, it, if it's Trump, will he be supported by Jeb Bush? Jeb Bush put out a tweet today saying, I've been voting Republican since 1972. Like, you can count well, on me. Uh, but there's a question. But keep, so your point is what? That, that it's not worth the paper it's printed on, however what? Well, because it leaves an opening. I think Trump could claim he's the judge of this. If he's being treated well, and if he thinks he's not, I think he could tear it up. I don't think he would, because I don't think a third party candidacy is very attractive to him. It will cost him a fortune. Right now, he doesn't spend a penny. Everything he does, every time he sneezes, it's on live television with huge audiences. Mm -hmm. But he would have to create an infrastructure for a third party. Getting on the ballot is extremely expensive. And he has no chance of winning a general election as a third candidate. It, it hasn't happened. Uh, nobody has in 100 years. And I mean, even uh, Teddy Roosevelt lost, although he was a strong third party candidate. So he's not going to win, and he doesn't like to end up losing. So I don't think it's an attractive alternative. And I do think he has a sense he has a good shot now of winning, and that's why he wants to stay in, in the Republican Party. It makes sense. Sure does. He's atop every single poll we have seen thus far uh, and continues to lead the others by miles. Charles, great to see you tonight. My pleasure. Well, we have breaking news tonight on what looks like a scuffle outside of the Trump, Trump event in New York today over the issue of illegal immigration. Trace Gallagher in moments with, what, with the video that is quickly going viral tonight. You'll see it in three minutes. And then we'll speak with Mark Thiessen about the stunning new poll on what may happen when the Republican field starts to shrink. Plus, a stunning twist in the story of a court clerk who refused to issue same-sex marriage licenses based on her Christian faith. Kim Davis is tonight in jail, could be there for as much as a year. And presidential candidate Ted Cruz is here just ahead with the powerful defense of this small town clerk. And then why in the world would this woman lie to police in the middle of a manhunt for three suspected cop killers? Brian Kilme tonight has the answer and wait until you hear what it is. Well, she'd initially reported that uh, two individuals approached her car, uh, a male black and a male white, and they were asking for a ride to Wisconsin. 